In this presentation, we will go over an introduction to the Health Information Systems Program and DHIS2. We will start by discussing the Health Information System Program and DHIS2 origins. We will also discuss the community behind the software. We will describe a quick overview of some of the various DHIS2 features and discuss this concept of DHIS2 as an integrated data warehouse. We will also describe how DHIS2 can be used as an information sharing and analysis tool, not just as a data collection tool. The Health Information Systems Program, which supports DHIS2, is a global action research network that was initiated through a collaboration of the University of Oslo and University of Western Cape in 1994. DHIS2 is the eventual result of this initial collaboration. DHIS2 is an open source software that allows for reporting, analysis, and dissemination of data for all health programs. Recently, DHIS2 has also been applied to use cases outside of the health system as well. One of the key goals in using DHIS2 is to build a shared and integrated data warehouse where all essential health data can be stored. In turn, this will provide information for action. There are three broad categories of data that DHIS2 supports. This includes aggregated data, event data, and patient-based data. We will discuss these concepts a lot more throughout other sessions. So just quickly, we will go over a brief history of DHIS2. Through the collaboration between University of Oslo and the University of Western Cape, DHIS1 was actually created and used in South Africa. In 2006, DHIS2 was piloted. This was a shift over from an access-based system, in which DHIS1 was using, over to the web-based platform that we now know today. In 2012, a series of DHIS2 academies were launched, allowing for regional capacity building. By the end of 2014, 46 countries were using DHIS2. This has only grown since then. In 2016, there are 29 countries and 7 Indian states that use DHIS2 as its national standard. Various partner countries and other agencies are also using DHIS2 in various stages of implementation. The HISP collaboration has resulted in the creation of a global DHIS2 network of action. This includes open source development through various HISP nodes, as well as HISP nodes being created in multiple countries. Lately, we also see collaborations between countries that are using DHIS2, resulting in regional level use cases. In these cases, we have countries sharing data together using DHIS2 and allowing individuals to analyze this data together. This includes building DHIS2 portals with shared data within the economic community of West African states, the East African community, and the greater Mekong subregion. These are just some examples of how DHIS2 is being used to share data regionally. The DHIS2 academies have also been evolving since their initial inception in 2012. These regional workshops allow for individuals to come together and learn more about DHIS2. We've recently introduced a new curriculum for the DHIS2 Academies, and we will go over this in more detail in other sessions. The Level 1 Academy includes the Information Use, Customization, and Tracker Academies. And the Level 2 Academies now include specific advanced topics. Through these Academies, we also encourage sharing experiences across countries. With the main goal ensuring that participants learn about new DHIS functionalities, customizations, in advanced use cases. One of the concepts that we will come back to in other sessions is that DHIS2 is a platform. It's a generic platform that therefore supports a wide range of different use cases, both within and outside of the health sector. This allows for distributed innovation in a wide network. Many different individuals and organizations from all over the globe can contribute to ongoing DHIS2 
development. DHIS2 itself allows for flexible configuration and customization, allowing organizations to meet a wide variety of different use cases. New functionality can also be created through open APIs and app development. So some considerations do need to be made when adopting DHIS2. DHIS2 is a platform. It's not a one-off or off-the-shelf product. It's highly configurable, and each time DHIS2 is adopted, it needs to be configured to meet the appropriate use cases defined within that setting. DHIS2 is an organic part of the changing health system. You need to continually develop the system in order to meet different requirements as your health system changes. One of the key principles that we always advocate when adopting DHIS2 is that core team capacity development is crucial. As mentioned in the introduction, we will now discuss DHIS2 being used as a data warehouse. We will come back to this concept several times through our sessions. Within DHIS2, we want to place all of our different data sources. In this example, we are looking at a DHIS2 system which is storing health data. We can have our different data sources from our routine reporting. We can also store data from other systems, from surveys, any of our population data, and we can take that and bring it together. Users can then engage with the data in various ways. We can create predefined reports for these users to access, and also allow these users to create their own reports within DHIS2. By allowing these users to interact directly with the data within the system, we are able to close off this feedback loop, as users can engage directly with the data and make conclusions based on what they have found. In DHIS2, a variety of outputs can be made. These outputs can be shared with other users within the system, can be given descriptions in order for these outputs to be given appropriate context, and can be discussed between users in the system as well. In DHIS2, we have the ability to submit data using computers, Android devices, and feature phones as well. We will discuss and demonstrate some of these uses in other sessions. If you want to learn a bit more about DHIS2, including some of the concepts that we've discussed in this presentation, have a look at the website. We also have some other demonstrations of DHIS2 uses on the play.dhis2.org webpage. Let us know if you have any questions about anything that we've discussed in this session. In the next session, we will introduce Trainingland which is the training environment that has been created for use in this academy.